Welcome to the Reviews Without Remorse podcast with Joe and Dan. Be warned, the discussions in this podcast may contain detailed spoilers. For spoiler-free reviews of newly released films, be sure to check out our show on our YouTube channel. Enter at your own risk and enjoy the show. This is what we do, who we are. Live for nothing or die for something. Your call. My name is David. His name is Joe. This is episode 137. And in this show, we will discuss Movie Pass was on life support, but the plug has finally been pulled. But in its passing, it left behind a positive legacy. We discuss Bad Boys for Life. The third movie in the Bad Boys series gets a trailer but loses Michael Bay. Does it matter? And then, 20 years after Rambo 3, Stallone returns to fight a war in Burma in the oddly titled Rambo. What's up, my man? Ah, uh, not much. Looking forward to discussing this film today. It's uh, an interesting one, so... Yes, it is actually an interesting one, and I am also looking forward to it. And mind you, this is the first time I've ever seen this movie. So this, oh, okay. this, will, definitely, this will definitely be a fun one to, to discuss. Let's do it. Starting... Summer of 2017, so going nearly two years, MoviePass came up with the idea of doing a Netflix for movie theaters. Not a terrible idea, but a terribly implemented service. It was $10 a month and allowed you unlimited movies, one per day for an entire month. Investors were like, huh? The CEO was like, I can do this. And he tried, and he tried, and he bullshitted and he lied and this past saturday that would be um saturday the 14th of september movie pass is no more but you know what i am here to praise movie pass you know why because every single theater now has its own version of movie pass and frankly I feel that's a good thing. There is services out there that MoviePass inspired to start. AMC, Lowe's, um, Regal, they all have their own version of MoviePass. Granted, you know, you're stuck with one particular theater, but for the price, I don't think it's that bad. I think that it, you know, it became much more realistic for the theaters themselves to do it themselves. And I'm glad that they existed long enough for something like that to happen. So... This isn't a Nelson Muntz-esque ha-ha. This is a <laughs> thanks for giving it a try, guys. I feel you did something good. So hail and farewell. I, I love your attitude, my friend. That is, that's terrific. And uh, you know what? I guess I, I, I'm with you. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll just go with that. I, I, it's funny. I, when this whole debacle was sort of unraveling, it was kind of fascinating to watch, uh, and yeah, it does sort of make you scratch your head and say, this guy tried to do what and thought this was going to come together. How? Uh, yeah, but you know what? You're right. I guess um, he got the ball rolling and other people saw it and said, you know what? Crazy as it looks, it's worth looking into and figuring something out. So I'm with you. I, I will I will let you just have that. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was successful enough for a while there. They they had enough customers. Well, it wasn't successful for them. I don't think they ever made money, but there was enough of an uptick in uh, people going to theaters with Movie Pass for the theaters to notice. That's why it happened. So once they realized there was a market for this, it was like it was almost brilliant. It's like these guys fell on their swords, and the theaters kind of like ran with it. I'm not a big fan of like. One, you know, each entity doing their own thing. It's kind of like my little argument with the fact we have like fifty thousand different streaming services now. But I'm, I like it more than the alternative. It offers me the opportunity to see more movies now because it's less expensive. Mm. Um, well, I, I I don't know if I'll agree with your premise. In like when you say 
yeah, everybody was doing it, so there's a market for it. Well, yeah, you give stuff away for free, uh, sure. <laughs> People will come running, and and you know, uh, but yeah, I yes, your point is still taken. That. Uh, Again, yeah, people want to go to see movies. They want a, an economical way to do that. Uh, movies are getting very expensive. I mean, it's. I mean, honestly, sometimes I look at our schedule and I go, "Man, that's a lot of bucks we got to shell out for movies." Uh, so yeah, I, I'm with you. It it does. It, it did kind of at least raise awareness that you know what people are interested in something like this. So there you go. I agree. Farewell, movie pass. You know, it's funny. I I heard that the CEO is actually he resigned. And is trying to actually buy the company. The hell? What? Are you nuts? What? <laughs> what? That's that's the, that's the latest news. Is that the C, the former CEO of the company has left the company? Is now trying to like buy like I, I don't know the assets or the title or something along those lines. He wants to revive it. It's like didn't you just shut it down? How, the hell is your problem? How, how do you buy a company that company that's essentially worthless? I mean, the stock went, I mean, every time they tried to do those little funny things with the stock prices that, you know, these little splits and everything, it was like, hey, look, look what you did. You made a stock go from $20 to like 50 cents in one day and then less, less, less than a penny the next day. So, uh, yeah, how do you put a value on that? I'm not, I'm not sure, but. You know what? Uh, uh, whatever. That's, that's, it's his money. If he wants to blow it like that, you, you go to town, buddy. Come on, man. You can get that buffed out. No, you can get that buffed out. <sighs> I don't really want to talk about this movie. <laughs> but we're having a light news week. So uh, we had to throw that in there. You know, originally I was going to sit here and extol the, the virtues of, you know, two animated shows on Netflix, which we might do further down the line. But instead, we're going to talk about Bad Boys for Life. Joe, question for you. Have you seen any of the Bad Boys movies? Not one. You know something funny? Neither have I. <laughs> so, so for all I know, this is hysterical. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well, I yeah. uh yes, here, so let's let's try to sound intelligent about movies that we, we have never even seen 5 minutes of. Uh I will say this, uh honestly, I kind of went, wow, Will Smith compared to the last few of these, really hasn't changed a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And quite frankly, Martin Lawrence, aside from maybe like, you know, five extra pounds, pretty much looks exactly the same too. So, you know, props for that. Uh, and yeah, I suppose, I mean, if you liked these movies, I mean, this kind of looks like it should be similar. I didn't see a whole lot of heavy duty action. Uh, and for me, the jokes look pretty awful. Uh, the part where they go in and he says, let me handle this. I'm going to look into his soul and da -da -da, you're going to do what? And then, of course, the guy punches him out and Will Smith has a, a comeback. I'm like, this is funny. <laughs> like, I, again, it's not for me, but it the colors are bright and shiny and the cars are bright and shiny. And, and I'm sure the women in there are sexy and whatever. So, hey, if this is your thing, you go for it. <laughs> Frankly, I wasn't as magnanimous as you were. Um, <laughs> I I kind of watched this and just felt a giant shrug. I don't have anything against Martin Lawrence. I don't have anything against uh, Will Smith. But the original movies never really appealed to me to begin with. You know, but they were also Michael Bay, you know, clap traps. Mm. So it wasn't going to be like anything great. It was just going to be like, you know, silly, stupid fun. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with silly, stupid fun. You know, we're reviewing Rambo movies for God's sake. You know, <laughs> I, who, who am I to talk about what is and what isn't silly, stupid fun? But I, I, I guess maybe if I had seen the other ones, I would, I would find some appeal in this. But it's right now, I'm not feeling it. Joe Carnahan is actually write, writing the screenplay for this. And he's actually written a couple of interesting things in the past that I've rather enjoyed. So I suppose that's about the only thing that I find appealing about this. Um, you know, like Narc, The Grey, Smoking Aces. I don't know if you've ever seen those. No. Y you know what? I highly recommend those movies. Okay. All right. All right. We should, maybe we should add them to a list at some point. 
but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed those movies a lot more than I, I thought I was going to. Uh, but um, so yeah, there, there, there's your thing. But you know, but then there's no Michael Bay, and I kind of feel like you know, if you're gonna go for it, shouldn't you keep the person that kind of invented the aesthetic? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know what Michael Bay is doing these days after the Transformers kind of got away from him. So I'm not. Eh, who knows? Don't know what's going on behind the scenes there. But you know what? I feel like we've already spent too much time talking about this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to add one last thing because this is just too hysterical for me. So I'm looking through IMDb and I'm looking at like some of the names of, you know, the characters. You've got hot Miami model, sexy model. You get the idea here? <laughs> there you go. Like I said. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, you, you mentioned it and I was like, holy smokes, he's right. It's like completely shallow. <laughs> of course. It's just, I mean, I, I, again, I have never sat through one of these movies you know what i i've never sat through one of these i never sat through any of the flash the furious movies uh I, I mean i'm sure there's a couple others i haven't never seen before uh again it's not i'm i'm not the target audience so no it would seem not it would seem not but um um uh, well you know to answer one last question uh yeah no uh Michael Bay is just producing now. He hasn't directed anything and isn't slated to direct anything as of right now. So maybe he's finally retired. Maybe the world is spared. Maybe that's what happened here. Just going to live off his royalties. He is a legend of war. A soldier without a country. You know his name. And you know what he's capable of. I was told it might be possible to rent your boat. We need to get upriver. Where? Into Burma. Burma's a war zone. In Thailand. John Rambo joins a group of mercenaries to venture into war-torn Burma and rescue a group of Christian aid workers who are kidnapped by the ruthless local infantry units. Written by Art Monterostali and Sylvester Stallone, based on characters created by David Morrell, directed by Sylvester Stallone, Rambo. Unless you saw the extended cut, in which case it was John Rambo. Yes, it is. And it's funny you mention that because I actually started out watching the... I, I have both. I literally have both on Blu-ray. I started watching the extended cut today uh, to get ready for this, and I was a little surprised. I didn't realize that they actually changed the name to John Rambo on that, but sure enough, they did. Uh, and I remember that being tossed around as, as the title for a while before they just went with Rambo. Uh, so yeah, interesting stuff. I, when I went to look to watch the movie, um, I found out that basically the one with John Rambo was considered by Stallone to be the director's cut. So I kind of went back and forth, but then I had an issue finding the non-extended cut. So my review is based on the extended cut of this movie. Joe's is based on a kind of an amalgamation. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I actually started out watching the extended cut. I watched the first half hour or so, which is really where it all is. Um, mm. So, But then once I did that, I realized, well, you know what? I better backtrack and watch the other one so that we could talk about the same thing. Uh, turns out that kind of backfired anyway. But it doesn't. It honestly doesn't matter. If, if you've seen, if you watch the deleted scenes from the Blu-ray of the regular cut, you've, there you go. That's more or less the extended cut. Uh, I think that's kind of all it is. Just you sort of alter the takes and, you know, not necessarily that much longer or better. There are some things that are, I noticed in the extended cut, uh, in, the, in the original cut, the regular theatrical cut, the film starts out with the, um, the voiceover over the news footage. Then mm -hmm. they cut right to that scene where they got the, the soldiers are, putting the people out, making them run across the, um, the rice paddies they there. Just with the, some mines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the, in the extended cut, they kind of throw that out more in the middle. Like basically when he's back and forth with Julie Bench's character about not taking them out, 
uh, they cut to that scene and then back again. So it's, again, I'm not sure what the point is or why that was, but yeah, I mean, honestly, the cuts are just so similar. It's, you know, we're talking about the same film. Pretty much. And this is a good film. I won't say I was blown away, but I really liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it a hell of a lot more than, than Rambo 3. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I would say it was better than Rambo 2, but, you know, in many ways, it's a much closer back to formula, shall we say, without the formula. I appreciated <laughs> that they didn't... With, well, what I mean by it, it kind of got the essence better here than it did in Rambo 3. Um, it told a story of a situation which, frankly, I didn't know a hell of a lot about. Uh, it didn't get overly preachy about it, which I appreciated. And it made me feel sympathy for the people in that area without, mm. like, you know, pushing my face into the shit like like some other movies would do. Uh, I felt the action was excellent and intense and fun and actually found myself a little on my edge, in, you know, with, with it. I like this movie. I liked it a lot. Hmm. Okay, that's that's actually that's interesting. Um, it's funny when 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 I hear you say they did it without pushing my face in the shit. There's a part of me that's saying I, I know what you meant, so I, I'm not picking on it on what you're saying. But there's a voice in the back of my hand going, "Jesus, you didn't feel like your face was being pushed in the shit? How much more violence and guts did they have to shove in your face before you go? Okay, I get it." <laughs> um, <laughs> And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but but wow, is this film kind of in your face, frankly. Um, and it's funny how when we talk about the Rambo series that there there are always sort of echoes from the Rocky franchise. Uh, we kind of mentioned real quick, or I kind of mentioned that uh, I felt that First Blood was sort of like, you know, the original great film that uh, was kind of like Rocky. And then by Rambo 2, you're already kind of fast forwarding to Rocky 4. You know, this was the Rocky four of the franchise and Rocky three tries to do the same, but kind of ends up being a little more like Rocky five. Um, this was kind of the parallel of uh, the Rocky, the Rocky Balboa. Balboa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was Stallone trying to go back to revisit his characters and to do it in a way. And, and you can tell by the titles, by, by the way. I mean, again, this one uh, kind of was. I, they, they were talking about calling it John Rambo before it ended up being just Rambo. And then of course, Rocky, the Rocky six is actually Rocky Balboa. Um, I think you can tell that what Stallone is trying to do is essentially re revisiting these characters and doing character studies uh, and putting them in a movie that will kind of support the character study. Uh, I, and here again, you've got a lot of Rambo talking about his view of the world Um where this character would be today, basically burnt out, uh, again, kind of forgotten, thrown away, just living in some corner of the world where nobody can can find him. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that to me is very interesting. And based on that, I, I agree with you. I like this film very much. Uh, it's a very limited film in a lot of areas. There are a lot of areas where... I saw where they were going for. Uh, could have been done a little bit better, um, you know. But um, all in all, and I and by the way, I can recall seeing this in the theater, and it was funny. I had a buddy in high school who uh, who basically looked me up and said, "Hey," because I was a big Rambo fan in high school, and you know, a huge Rambo fan in high school. And he basically said, "You know, he's like, hey, listen, I know that new Rambo movie's coming out. I'm coming up to see you to go see it with you because I want to go see it when you go to see it." <laughs> so, sure enough, opening night we went and saw this film, and and I remember kind of going, "That was awesome," and he goes, "That sucked." <laughs> so, uh, wow, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I. I share a lot of your enthusiasm. I, I liked this film very much, and I liked the fact that, um, again, it was sort of straddling the fence between the the, the Rambo of the, of 2 and 3 uh, and the, the Rambo from First Blood. And, yeah, I, I really did appreciate the fact that it was focused on the character. 
giving us, you know, where Rambo would be today, not just the, the mindless action hero who just shows up in some part of the world to to have action scenes. Um, yeah, this was this was kind of like, just, again, getting to know where this character is and what, what he would be doing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, and it's rough. It's a rough film, by the way. Um, my girlfriend will not watch any Rambo film with me primarily oh, no. <laughs> what's that i said oh no why not <laughs> <laughs> well primarily because of this movie uh i i don't know when she saw it but i know she but she's you know wh- whenever i mentioned seeing a rambo movie she goes no i don't like that movie it's got uh women being beaten and tortured and raped and i'm like oh you're talking about the fourth one uh and she and it was enough to just turn her off totally from ever watching anything rambo related at all um and i can understand it because again, this film is rough. It is kind of, um, uh, it's, it's, it's rough. It's rough and in your face and it's, it's not, it doesn't hold back. I mean, there are parts of the world that are just that uncivilized. And, uh, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's unsettling for sure. But yeah, I mean, it does, it, it, it is kind of, that's, that's sort of the whole point of it is that Rambo has seen things that, uh, you and I take for granted and um so so yeah i i'm with you but uh but we'll talk about the things that are not quite working the thing is and i i appreciate uh mary if you're listening i appreciate what you're saying (laughs) absolutely i do but it's just it and weirdly i actually have a problem with that particular area of plot which i'm going to get which we'll get to but um the thing I like most about this movie is that it felt more real than any of the previous Rambo movies, save for First Blood. I kind of felt like the everything that happened felt plausible, mm-hmm. except for one little thing, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so yes, here we are with Rambo, and we have... The first film without Jerry Goldsmith's soundtrack. I want to kind of cover this real quick because mm. we have Brian T- uh, Taylor instead because Jerry Goldsmith actually died in 2004. This came out in 2008. So I got to tell you, I kind of missed his music. Um, Actually, I, I'll, I will – I didn't actually, and I'll tell you why. I honestly – when – the film was coming out and I knew, the, you know, when I knew the film was coming out, I immediately went to IMDb and I'm looking at uh, who's involved and I immediately kind of went, oh man, I wish they brought back Jerry Goldsmith. And I was a little annoyed until I realized or someone brought it to my attention that Jerry Gold- Goldsmith had just passed away. And I was like, oh man. So, but I do have to say, I really liked the score by Brian Tyler. I thought he did a really good job uh, incorporating the those classic themes, you know, I mean, there were, there were moments where, uh, he, he really did sort of hit those beats that Goldsmith was so famous for in the Rambos. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I'm not saying he did a bad score. I just missed it. Yeah. You know, that, that's really all. It wasn't anything. I want to just point out that I am not saying that, uh, Tyler's score was bad. Mm. I just missed Goldsmith. Right. You know, I because whenever the familiar the familiar beats and melodies would come up, it kind of just made me happier. I felt that Taylor did a great job uh, with this movie. It's just you know, we basically spent the first three movies praising Jerry Goldsmith. So here we are on the fourth, <laughs> yeah. and it's easy to you know maybe if there had been a couple of years separation, I probably wouldn't. But the fact that we just went through the previous you know three movies, and now here we are. It just for a minute there, it just kind of got me. Yeah, so. I hear you. It, 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 he was, uh, I mean, Jerry Goldsmith is a treasure, and it's its a shame that he's not with us anymore. So, yes, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay, but now on to some issues. So, like, I liked the action scenes, um, and yes, it was very gory. It was very bloody, but it was so obviously CGI. <laughs> yeah a lot of it yes and that kind of I, I i appreciated what he was trying to go for and everything like that but it's almost like oh hey, look at this dude toy i got to play with and, mm. you know and he's got you know guys basically being eviscerated in ways that you know 
I'm sure like weapons would actually do stuff like that. I don't have a problem with that. It just, it really looked low budget and it took me out for just a moment. Yeah. Just, just a, just a tiny moment. There, there were, yes, I agree with you. There's a lot. Of, well, I'll even do you one better. I think that's sort of the fatal flaw of the film is that it is so low budget uh, I, I don't know what the budget for this was. Uh, I never bothered to look, but it just, it, I don't need to, to know that it just doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look like it's got a high budget. I mean, honestly, um, not much is actually happening. I mean, this, this whole movie feels like it was done on a shoestring budget, uh, in the jungle someplace. They put together a couple of huts here and there to have sets, uh, you know, a couple low budget actors. Not that anybody did a bad job, as far as I'm concerned. They all did fine. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, a lot of names you didn't really know. Um, and yeah, so when they get into stuff like the CGI, uh, these people blowing up, exploding. I mean, it's it's kind of you could sort of. I almost feel like this was kind of um, like you know when George Lucas decided to brush off the uh, the prequels when he started noticing, look at all this great stuff you can do with computer effects now. I want to make movies again. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I kind of wonder, like, did Stallone see a lot of these kind of hyper-violent movies happening and just kind of went, hold my beer? You know, <laughs> he's, I'm Rambo. I'll show you what a violent movie is. And he basically decided to just pull out all the stops and do this Looney Tunes. I mean, it's funny. I hear people... You know, I, I've hear, I hear a lot of, there's a lot of, we're not the only um, podcast or YouTubers that are doing Rambo retrospectives lately, because I guess everybody's kind of gearing up for the new movie. So I've seen people do some reviews recently of some of the old Rambos. And a lot of people have remarked that when Rambo 3 came out, it was regarded at the time as being like one of the most violent movies ever. Now, I don't know that that, that I would subscribe to that. Uh there's a lot of explosions, a lot of stuff going on. So I think there's an inference that every time something blows up, somebody just got killed. So they sit there, you know, checking boxes, uh, cha-ching, another one just bite the, bite the dust. This was Looney Tunes violent on a level. I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen a movie quite as violent as this, frankly. Uh, I mean, it's not. And when I say violence, I'm not simply saying like, like somebody could say, what about Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That's more. No, I'm talking like, like. It's it's both quantity and quality. Like I'm watching just slews of you know masses of people getting machine gunned down, gunned down, uh, slaughtered violently. I mean, it, I I think this is like the most over the top violent thing I've ever seen. Frankly, uh, I can't think of anything uh, that would uh, to compare it to. Frankly, so yeah. So I don't know. With that said, yeah, the, the CGI. A lot of the stuff that's going on, heads blowing off, bodies splitting apart. You're right. It looks a little cheesy sometimes. A lot of CGI stuff. And yeah, it, it, I agree with you. It, it's, it's distracting. It's honestly my biggest, uh, one, of my, one of my biggest things in the movie. I kind of felt like I, I get where you were going with this. I understand you wanted to be visceral. I understand you wanted to really demonstrate the horrors of war maybe in a way like 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 Spielberg did with Saving Private Ryan, but you know you kind of crossed somewhere from war is hell to you know dropping the coyote off the side of a mountain with this little <laughs> sign saying "Oops." Yeah, <laughs> it, it got a little cartoonish every once in a while, and that's kind of where it, it it kind of took it out for me. I still enjoyed the movie. Don't get me wrong, but there were moments where it did. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. So, yeah, that's a weakness. Right. And again, there's, um, see, it's funny to, you know, I'm going to say something and I might regret this, but. In, Don't you always. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny that in, when we talked about the other Rambo films and there's, there's such a window, uh, an opportunity to get into politics. Uh, and, you know, I think for the most part, you know, we, kind of did it without really getting into any politics and but I find that this one for me personally the 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 risk of getting into politics or the temptation to get into it is much greater and what I mean by that is I think that what the film is trying to show you is that you know 
again, we sit here and we debate politics in a certain way. This one is trying to show you that the world is an unsafe place. Uh, and based on that, it's almost like a lot of people's worldview uh, are different, I suppose. And this one, in that respect, it's almost kind of cutting to the core a little closer. Like, I mean, again, like Rambo 2 and then these are the bad guys and the Russians and Rambo 3. Again, the Russians, we even talk about the Taliban and yada, yada, yada. You know, we're talking about politics in 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 a in a in one way, but here again, the risk is is kind of it's different because this one is really more about your worldview and if if you uh, your opinion on how we should deal with world events could change greatly depending on depending on how you see the rest of the world. This movie is basically saying the whole world is a cesspool, or, or at least there's you know like it's a whole violent uncivilized world out there. And you can sit here with your head in the sand all you want, but I'm showing you what it's really like. Uh, so again, in, in that respect, is I kind of find that to be a little more sort of in your face than any of them have been so far, if that makes any sense. Um, I see where you're coming from, but I guess I didn't. Um, I, I guess I didn't feel it as much as uh, as you did. I I kind of found it to be a bit. Um, educational frankly i i call me naive call me a dumb american whatever the heck uh, you want but um yeah if it's not in my backyard i kind of um kind of don't know about it mm. I'm, I'm a bit uh, clueless in that respect so you know i'll take any opportunity to um to, to 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 learn something about or at least you know find myself intrigued enough to look into more of a movie mm. you know yeah. uh, it, it, into into a, into a situation so yeah no i i i had no clue i had no clue this stuff was going on in burma and i kind of feel like a naive moron for not <laughs> yeah uh well i mean again it's it's uh, we know that there's stuff out there i mean we know i mean just if we look in history we you know this this dictator killed millions of people and this one this happens over here so i mean it's not like you know i mean we're not totally clueless to it but yes I, basically my point is that i feel like it, it's kind of putting a worldview in your face more so than even the ones before it and and mm. we tend to look at those as being kind of politically motivated or or at least have political opinions where this one I feel like it's much more so. Mm. Yeah, I will grant you that. I will grant you that. I I just I didn't, you know, yeah, I'm aware the world happens, uh dude. I'm not that naive. I just maybe I just stick my head in the sand a little too much. Uh, <laughs> you know? Maybe, maybe maybe that's what it really comes down to. Maybe I just would prefer to think that, you know, there's not a bunch of jerk jerkwads in the world like yeah. you well, see in this movie this movie's probably saying you know what i don't blame you if you did and, and i mean honestly <laughs> i mean seriously that's his um when he's talking to these th that's what we're talking about right now is essentially the essence of the film i mean here, here you have these uh missionaries from colorado you know these bible beaters and you know they want to go out and save the world. And Rambo looks is basically looking at them and laughing in their faces, saying like, "You have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea where you are. No idea what you're in for." Um, I mean, and honestly, the the scene where when he actually drops them off, you know, he drops them off, he leaves, uh, and we kind of cut back to them later, right before the shit hits the fan. And, right. the, and the, the camera sort of pans around and sort of follows her around. And there's one shot, in, like you see them passing out things to these. I mean, again, like these people are just destroyed. I mean, they're like just barely surviving uh, in this hellhole of a uh, part of the world. And, you know, here they are handing out things to these little kids. And they're probably like, what, what, what am I going to do with this? Eat it? Uh, and then they pan around to this guy, one of the, I guess one of the doctors. And he says to, he says to the little kid, let me help you with this little problem. And it's almost like that. I, I feel like when they say that line, it's almost like that's his commentary on these people. Let me help you with this little problem. You ain't helping nobody. I mean, and, again, and, and seriously, and this is like, sec I mean, talk about polishing the brass of the Titanic. He's he's gonna he's gonna you know come in with a band aid to help some little kid who's right about to explode by a firefight anyway like what's the point that's this whole 
being there is completely pointless. And you even see her. I even think that the idea is that they sort of follow to her and she kind of looks around and she's kind of, I think she, the whole point is that she's got this very doubtful look on her face. Like maybe he's right. Why am I here? What am I doing? How, how am I helping th- these people in any way, shape or form by being here by, by again, a couple band-aids here and there, like it makes no sense. So I, again, that's, I think that is kind of the, the, perspective that that we're trying that, that he's trying to get across and, and effectively frankly but yet he's the big hero at the end so he kind of does make a difference he, he him him the mercenaries and uh the rebels basically wiped out this entire platoon or whatever size you know thing it was so if he's saying there's nothing you could do unless you have a gun okay so they have a gun now. So now they could do something. So you're saying we could do something? I'm not sure where the message is going with this. Well, That's the thing. It kind of confuses it. Well, he's uh, basically, yeah. I mean, he says at the beginning, you know, when when he, they're asking him to, to take them upriver, are you bringing any weapons? No, then you're not changing anything. And that's, and basically by the end, nothing really changes until Rambo gets behind the, the, the this gigantic machine gun and starts just tearing through people. Uh, that's the only time things change. I mean, that's, that's essentially the point he's making. I suppose it is. All right. Well then message received, <laughs> but let's so- talk about the, is it, a, is it a, an enjoyable journey to get to this point? I, I think it is. Uh-huh. I kind of, I kind of felt like, it definitely picked up where his attitude was from the end of uh, Rambo three. Uh-huh. You know, maybe he's still not big into the whole, you know, having to having to fight a war, but he recognizes that that is the way it is, and he's become jaded. You know, and, and it's, it's twenty years later since since uh, the events of Rambo three. So yeah, mm. it wouldn't be too surprising if he's become jaded. He ekes out a living. He does what he can. Uh, and then the next thing you know, he gets all this thrust into his lap. And frankly, I felt like as a growth of the character, and there was a level of character growth to him in this movie, I felt it was warranted. And I felt it was good. And I felt that when we finally did get to the ending where you see him walking up to the Rambo farm in what I assume is Arizona, it kind of felt like, yes, this is where the logical conclusion for this, for, for this to go. I felt they I felt they earned it. I felt that the action sequences, you know, as over the top as the violence was of them, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like it was a case like from from Rambo 2 and 3 where he's basically just standing up with a bow and arrow and shooting <laughs> at a guy shooting him. There was no moment that felt like that. There was no, there was none of that bravado moment that, yeah. you know, typical 80s badass type thing. And I kind of like that they they that Stallone learned enough about the way action movies are now that he kept it gritty and he tried to keep it at least within a level of plausibility. He knew that as a 60-year-old guy, which is about how old he was when this was filmed, he couldn't be the single kick-ass person, hence the mercenaries, hence the rebels coming out of the woods near the end. Very similar to the ending of Rambo 3 when uh, the Mujahideen came out at the last minute and, and saved them all. Mm. But here, it felt a more realistic thing because, you know, he had already kind of like torn them apart. They kind of scattered. They didn't really, you know, have their act together. And then <clears throat> out of the woods comes a bunch of fresh soldiers. But they're not like, it's not like they have, you know, like tanks or anything like that, like the, like the Russians did in Rambo 3. It felt like, okay, this is a logical step for the battle. This, you know, makes sense. And the fact that they were able to quick, quickly sweep them up didn't feel too out of the ordinary. Right. I found it to be very grounded, which surprised me. A grounded Rambo movie. Whoever thought I would say that? It hasn't been since First Blood that I felt a Rambo movie was grounded. And honestly, now I'm feeling your worry about Rambo Last Blood because of watching this. Because now I kind of feel like, well, wait a second. Ah. Where are they going to go now? Yeah, I, yes. I, I do sort of worry about that as well. And yeah, you're making pretty much based on this. I am mildly concerned about the next one that it's going to be this kind of Looney Tunes violence fest. Uh, I mean, again, the violence and the, I mean, put it this way. I have no, well, actually let me, I am kind of hitting an age where violence in movies is starting to bother me. 
Uh, I'm not real. I'm not real comfortable with a lot of really excessive violence and, and kind of uh, like some of it's great. And when I say great, like depending on how it works, like uh, John Wick is is kind of, you know, it's it's all fun over the top and that gets very violent. But, you know, I, again, I, I sort of can take that where it is when they get more realistic. Uh, I'm getting kind of squeamish in my old age. <laughs> um, <coughs> get off my lawn. Totally. Uh, I think we talked about dragged across concrete. Ugh, that that bothered. I haven't seen I haven't seen that movie yet, but you mentioned yeah. how much it yeah. kind of yeah right. It's it's kind of um very it's it, it's not simply violence. It it's more of a um uh, you know we're, we're going out of our way to show you it's a very personal, intimate kind of violent thing that 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 again the kind of violence that makes me very squeamish. Um, anyway. Uh, so I'm not not Rambo. I'm not saying that this pushed me over the edge, but when when you did start to get into again, women getting, I mean, it's it's very uncomfortable when you're sitting there watching scenes of these women who are probably just prisoners being forced to dance for this group of animals, uh, and little by little they're going to get beaten, smacked around, raped, uh, and everybody's gonna cheer as this goes on. Yeah, again, I I'm. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm not trying to get into this whole like, you know, oh, I'm against violence in movies. No, 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 no. I'm not at all um, saying that it shouldn't it shouldn't happen or it should be censored or anything to that effect. I'm just simply saying me personally, I'm kind of getting to where, eh, you know, some of it I get a little squeamish with. Uh, so, yes, I, I kind of do have that nervousness about the next one. Uh, so and I kind of forget where I was going in the beginning. But, <laughs> but <laughs> well, I just want to add. I personally was thankful for the restraint in that in that scene. Okay, I have seen m- many movies that have uh, rape scenes in them, and they kind of always, almost always, they take it to some place that's like, "Am I watching something that's supposed to be a horrible, violent act against a woman, or is this supposed to be erotica?" You know, there's that thin line when they film. A scene like that yeah. where they're more interested in the woman's body or something like that. They're not really – I kind of appreciated – I mean I, I don't know where the hell that little red smoke thing came from to obscure the action, why they decided to throw off some red smoke mm. there. But I kind of appreciated that they did that because it got the point across without crossing a line into exploitative. Uh yes yes uh, not gratuitous yes I right, yes. I, I, I th- you're absolutely right there was um there was definitely nothing that they did that was supposed to make this uh a sexual thing uh mm-hmm. it is very much about the violence um in fact you're bringing to mind I remember a discussion that I had with a, a good friend of mine who happened to be a police officer and we had a discussion about how. You know, they, he's, how they always say rape is a crime of violence. And when I was younger, I never quite got that. I didn't understand that because I, I said I said to him, I said, you know, if, if I really, really try to rack my brains and try to put myself in the shoes of someone who could do that, I would just assume that I'm just so wound up sexually that I can't control myself anymore. And his response was, well, but that's the point. Someone who can think about it. The difference between someone who can think about it and who can actually carry it out is violence. And I was like, that's when it went off. I said, you know what? The, re- the light went off in my head. I said, you're absolutely correct. Um, and that's why I, and that was sort of how I come to, came to realize, yes, you're absolutely right. It is, it is a violent crime. Um, with that said, yes, in this film, you're absolutely right. They do not get gratuitous. There's no nudity. There's no need for it because it is simply about the ugliness and the violence. It's not, a, it's not anything more. Uh, and I appreciate that. But I will say, but I, I kind of sort of say to myself, but the violence gets a little gratuitous. I almost feel like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. This movie is not trying to be sexual in any way, but it is trying to, yeah, to say glorify is a little bit of a cheap shot, but, but I'll just say it, I guess it's, it, it does glorify the blood and guts part of, of this. And, um, to, to the point where, again, I, I, 
I do sort of wonder why. Like, is is it that the film can't doesn't have much else to offer that it has to get so gory and bloody and 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 gratuitously violent with heads exploding and? Well, I mean, seriously, the, I remember before the film came out, the first trailer I saw was a red band trailer. And this is kind of going back to where, um, again, like trailers on YouTube was not commonplace as it is now, I think. Uh, uh, but I, so, yeah, it was a red band trailer and it looked like a full blown snuff movie. I mean, mm. it was they were showing like all the close ups of a lot of like him in the back of the truck, just exploding the guy in the front seat. They showed him like, <laughs> I'm I, I, sorry, I, I laughed mean, at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And even, even they even worked in shots of like when he the scene where he he come they come up against the pirates and he shoots the pirates. Uh, yeah. He goes back later. I'm not even sure why this is, but he goes back later to uh, to burn that boat. Like when he on his way back, he stops at the pirate ship, right? Douses the whole thing with gasoline and sets it on fire. And again, I'm not sure why that is. It's not like he needs to cover his tracks. Um, but and leaves his knife behind. Yes, by the way. Yes, he does. And which is kind of odd because I didn't get why that was, except for the fact that I guess later they wanted to do um, like it was almost like they were kind of trying to have this moment where Rambo gives up violence. So he leaves the knife behind only when he gets called back, when the 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 um, the reverend from the church comes to find him and he goes in with the mercenaries and they show the scene where he literally forges a new knife, which is like a, like a machete more or less. Right. Uh, I, was that the only reason why we had to do the knife throwing part? Cause again, they, they purposely showed us that it was the same knife that he had for years. And I remember kind of being a little annoyed, frankly, that, it, that they did that. Cause I, again, you mean, you mean to tell me that Rambo for 20 years has carried this around and just like, Today he's gonna leave it behind and then just forge a new one. Eh, I don't know, but anyway. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what they were getting at there. I thought, you know, was it him denying, you know, what he is to his soul? Was it him trying to to erase what he was? I mean, you know, fire is the great eraser. So I I, I didn't quite get the symbolism that they were going for with that. Mm. Yeah, so. I didn't. I didn't either. But I, anyway, I I feel like I'm kind of. I feel like this whole discussion has been like just one tangent after another. Um, yeah. But hey, I guess yeah. that maybe that's just the, just the film itself. But yeah. But anyway, I I remember I was talking about the Red Band trailer, and they showed that, and it it almost implied that he was pouring gasoline over people who were not dead yet. <laughs> and I, <laughs> so, I, uh, so anyway, but yeah, I remember just thinking like, oh my god, this is just Looney Tunes. I almost thought it was a joke at one point until I realized it was you know. For real, but uh, anyway, uh, you know the Saw movies were at the height of their popularity when that came out. So there was this like um, expectation of a form of torture porn. Maybe, maybe he was compelled as part of financing for the movie to to make sure that he added some blood, guts, and gore. It's the only thing I could think of, mm. and and why they would go so far as to doing the CGI stuff. Because I I felt like you could have done. Like, the scene where, you know, the guy throw, throws Sarah into the room, you know what he's getting ready to do, and here comes Rambo behind him, and he rips his throat out. Rips his throat out with his bare hands. <laughs> yeah. Come on! <laughs> you, you know, I remember when I was, when, when I was watching that today, uh, and again, I've seen this, I saw the theater, I saw it a couple times since, but the, as I was watching it today, I remember thinking to myself, hey, Rambo, you, you, your whole point of coming out here is to save this little innocent girl uh, from the horrors of the world, maybe you should tell her to look away before you actually rip the guy's throat out. Like literally, rip the guy's throat out of his <laughs> out of his neck. Uh, but whatever. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the. We wars in your blood. As easy as breathing. Well, speaking of but whatever, but whatever do you score this, Joe? We are at that time. Mm. And it's weird because I feel like we didn't cover everything here. And it's a short movie. It's not that long a movie. I, you know but what? The- yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of feel like we barely skimmed the surface and I can't believe we're at that time already. But um, uh, yeah, th- and this is a tough one to score because, again, uh, 
it's a weird one. It's it's a kind of uh again an odd low budget uh, you know Rambo film uh the production value there's some shots that are pretty good there's some that are not um and honestly it it's like you said it's a short one it's it it really feels pretty short um and I and I kind of don't know how to feel about it but anyway I I did enjoy it when I saw it in the theater precisely as I said earlier because it did feel more like a character study than than an action film and I appreciated that and and I did appreciate the more <clears throat> grounded realistic parts uh, the, the grounded realistic nature of it um is it overly violent for the sake of being violent or is it just simply trying to say look this is it, when you peel back the curtains this is what some parts of the world look like if we dial it back you're not getting the message um, I mean, even the point when they, 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 they start to head towards the, um, the fort or when they, when they, when the mercenaries and him arrive and the guy says, you know, how many, he goes, how many people oh, about a hundred, what a hundred strong. I'm not doing that. I'm thinking to myself, probably killed about a thousand in Rambo two. I mean, you know, <laughs> if this was Rambo two, Rambo be like, oh, yeah, no problem. Give me my bow and arrow. I'll blow them all up. Um, anyway, so how do I score it? Uh, I, I guess I'm going to give it a seven. I think it's, again, it's good. It's, it's a worthy, uh, part of this whole franchise. Again, there's a lot to it. That's so much better than the, the some of the silly crap in the, in the third one. Uh, on the other hand, it's uh, very limiting. And again, it's, um, it's a stubby little film. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably get to that a little more when I get into my uh, who asked you. But um, so, yeah, I think a seven is fair. Um, it's a good watch. But again, it, it might not appeal to a lot of people who just want an action film. Um, so anyway, seven. Um, You know, when I went into this, I wasn't 100 percent sure where I was going to go with the score. I knew it was definitely going to be above a five. I knew that the movie earned above a five. It wasn't going to be a 10. Absolutely wasn't going to be a 10 because there's just there's just a little too much that didn't work for me. Uh, but so much of it did work for me. I, you know, even with the cartoony stuff, I liked the pacing and the editing and the action sequences. I really appreciated how the action sequences felt genuine as opposed to... I mean, when, when, when the action sequences happen, the most over-the-top thing is the fact that the CGI was cutting the bodies into pieces. That was the over-the-top portion. But leading up to each action beat, I felt was, got, was genuine, was organic, and felt in line with how it might be in that real situation. It didn't feel over-the-top with the exception of you know, the blood and the gore. So I very much appreciated that very much. And I honestly felt myself very much enjoying the action sequences in this movie. I scored this movie a very high 7. And I told myself that I could go an 8 depending upon how this conversation went. But you and I, once it, you know, after a couple of weeks there of going back and forth and being kind of out of sync, we're back in sync again. Wonder Twin Powers <laughs> activate. There you go. And... <laughs> You know, I mean, it just goes to show why, you know, we, we are friends is because we actually do see film very similarly. We only have very few times where we completely disagree with each other. Mm. And and this is a very worthy film in the, in, the, in the Rambo franchise. And frankly, if they had told me they were never making a Rambo movie after this, I would have been okay with that. I would have been quite okay with that, which is why, you know, Last Blood feels a little risky – after this, kind of like the way we felt Creed was risky, but the difference is, is that in Creed, Rambo, I'm sorry, excuse me, excuse me, Rocky became a secondary character. Rambo is still forefront in this new movie, so mm. I'm not 100% sure where that's going to go, but this could have been a great ending to the character. Uh, yes, I agree with that. I, you know, even the shot, um, the last shot when he arrives at the father's ranch, I guess. Yes. Uh, I liked how when he gets to the house, you see him look back and there's just a shot of the road. And you're probably like, why, why, why do we need a shot of this, of the actual street? But honestly, what pops into your head is the song in the original was, was it's a long road. 
Yes. And and that's basically the theme. Like the like every that whole Rambo theme. Even this film opens up with it. It's the instrumental of that song. Uh so yeah, I, I kinda like the symbolism there. Very much so. Very much so. So hope you don't screw it up, Stallone. Although I don't think he's directing the next <laughs> one. I think he's just writing it. Uh. Who asked you, my man? Uh, I'm going to kind of repeat what I said about how it feels very low budget. And specifically, honestly, I, I felt like when you get to the end, the big sort of finale, the big gunfight, I, I honestly felt like there's sort of like an remember how I said in Rambo 2 with that um, the great screenplay by Cameron, how it ups, 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 ups. Mm-hmm. Um, this one does not do that. And honestly, by the time the ending comes, my feeling, and I, I remember even going back to the first time I saw it, it did feel like there was sort of like another act missing. You know, there, there was, I felt like there should have been more than actually happened. I mean, again, he, I, I, I noticed that when, uh, probably cause I'm watching it on Blu-ray when they actually rescue the hostages, when he actually gets her out and uh, they, that's about two thirds into the film. I mean, the film was only 90 minutes. That was about the hour mark. And I remember feeling like it doesn't leave a lot of time for, um, I mean, again, this is when I guess the action beats would have been, but once they, they break them out, it's a lot of just sort of running through the woods. Not much is going on. Uh, I mean, seriously, Rambo two. This is right when the the action kicks in, and the best, most exciting parts are toward the last third of the film. Um, here, it just kind of just slowly goes out, and uh, we run through the woods, run through the woods. Things happen. Uh, the one guy gets his leg blown off. Um, uh, there's a cut scene where they have to stop because Julie Benz, her foot is cut. She ne- he needs to uh, patch her up real quick. Uh, and then, I mean, they do the the part where he sets the uh, the claymore by the big the big the big tomboy bomb. Um, you know, it just I mean, again, an interesting idea. The CGI of the explosion is a little weak, uh, but again, again, I mean, you're just watching Rambo kind of run through the woods, you know. So I mean, uh, I, and I wonder, like, is it budget constraints? Did they just sort of run out of cash and just say, like, well, we got to finish this up. What are we gonna do? And you get the big gunfight at the end and uh, that's it you know not not much beyond that so um i i i feel like i'm kind of giving a very broad answer for my specific who asked you but i i i think it's a budget problem and i'll just say that the the third act is a little lacking there's there's it's lacking in in some sort of action some kind of spectacle or at least something that's a little more satisfying than just a big old machine gun fight wow you know what's funny I'm going to disagree with you a little bit there. I felt the action near the end was great. Uh, well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? I'm going to hold off on that. Go ahead. Because because <laughs> I've got two. I've one is a nitpick, and one to me is kind of a, a gaping plot hole. Um, and I feel kind of horrified bringing it up, but it's the only thing that really just kind of stood out to me. First of all. When he's taking them down the river, at one point he says, they ask how long until we're there. And he says, a few hours. They went overnight. Mm. Like, it wasn't a few hours, it was overnight. Like, <laughs> yeah. nice job there, John Rambo, with your with your, with your uh, timing. Yeah. Okay, but, and I hate, hate saying this, but the guy came to Rambo. And said, they have been missing for 10 days. They were supposed to be back 10 days ago. Mm. Okay? I have... I... Oh, oh my God. Why am I stuttering? Um, (laughs) I have very... I have a huge amount of doubts that after 10 days and probably at least another two days of travel and searching and finding them, that... The night they happen to arrive in the camp is the night somebody finally decides to rape the little blonde girl. I had I <laughs> I that felt so unrealistic to me that it wasn't even funny. The the literal like, moment that Rambo gets there, yeah. <laughs> it, it, exactly. Mm. I mean, you know, I grant I granted. I I mean, I just I was like, "Really? They hadn't?" 
Yeah. Why are these guys still alive? It's, I felt like as I was watching it, I was like, I feel like there's a missing scene where these guys are negotiating with the Reverend to try to get them released, and that's why they haven't been touched. That's the only explanation I could think of, and I think that they needed to make that clear. Mm. Uh, yes, I, I would agree with that. That's a great point. And um, in, in fact, I, I, I kind of felt like there was a few things I was I didn't even touch on, and one of them is the screenplay. And I felt like again, this movie's it's pretty close, but yeah, there's a couple things in the in the wording here and there that were a little clunky. Um, you know, again, Rambo. There's there's some cutscenes where you know, or actual in the ex- extended view that we saw when he's talking to the girl in the rain at one point, you know, I mean, the dialogue is good, but it's could have been tweaked just a little bit better. Uh, and yeah, like you said, that's a good example. I mean, not, I mean seriously, I mean, the guy said they were supposed to return 10 days ago. Yeah. Uh, so meaning like, well, how long were they planning to stay there? Not overnight. So if they're there at least a week or two before they were supposed to return home, I mean, you would think if you're going to make that big of a trek, You'd probably be be there as long as a month, at least, even. Uh, so yeah, so ten days beyond that, the time they were supposed to be home is a long time. So right, the, the implication by that is that they've been there for a good while. It, it, exactly. It, it, the, the timing doesn't work out, and like I said, the the tiniest little explanation would have made the difference. It absolutely mm. just just a little thing like you know they they're asking us for money, you know, or something like that. So, a throwaway line of they're asking us for money would have been all I needed. I would have bought it then. It, to me, at that point, them taking the kids to, to train as soldiers, that makes sense to me. Them taking the women, you know, that makes sense to me. No. Keeping the keeping the white people alive, and I hate to put it like that, but it's what it was. They kept the white people alive, but they didn't give an explanation as to why these people would bother. They're too mm. old to be soldiers. So they're not keeping him for that. There, 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 there had to be an explanation, and there wasn't one as to why they they were being kept alive. Mm. And that's kind of a big plot point that needed to be filled. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I, I, I completely agree with that. They should have. Well, I, I think a simpler way to explain the they haven't come back. They were supposed to be back ten days ago. I would have just said they were supposed to check in, and they never did. Or they were supposed to call. Or something, and they never did. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? They they brought a satellite phone. They were supposed to check in, and they we haven't heard from them in two days, three days. Um, but then again, you got this guy who travels for, all the way from Colorado to to tell Rambo this, so that has to take time. So yeah, it's it's clunky. I I, I agree with you, but I think yeah, just saying you know they were supposed to check in it would have been better than uh, than that. But um, yeah, the timing is weird. I, I give you that. Whereas for my consideration, I like the action scene at the end of the movie. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you. It's like I, I see where you're coming from. I, I, I honestly do. But weirdly, I appreciated so much how they built the scenes to at least have a level of plausibility as opposed to like what I mentioned uh, in the previous episodes where they parodied in Hot Shots Part 2. Yeah. Where he was out of bullets, he just grabbed a, a handful <laughs> of bullets and threw them at the bad guys, and they fell down. Yeah, you know, I it was one of the tropes of the Rambo movies that I really was getting kind of tired of. It's like, oh, you know, every, everybody else is a freaking like bullet magnet, but you know, like reverse shields on Stallone and any other main <laughs> characters. Yeah. Here, I kind of it felt more honest in in its action, and I appreciated that, and that's why I want to kind of point it out. Is it over the top with the violence? Yeah, it was over the top with the violence. Is it still, like, ridiculous? Sure. But at least they worked it in a way that felt more honest than previously. So I'm going to give them a little bit of credit for that. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that. And again, I'm not trying to bag on that scene in and of itself. I just felt like there should have been more happening. There should have been more mm. after that, possibly, or more of a build up to that. Um but uh, no, no, I, I like the. I mean, as much as I was saying, like it's it's snuff film, like when he jumps in the back, chops one guy's head clear off, and then just explodes the guy in the front seat. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the problem with that part for me is that, and I again, Stallone, it is he's in his sixties at this point. Um, he's not going to run around karate kicking everybody or anything like that. He's he's, uh, but the fact that he's more or less just going to stand on the back of this truck shooting everyone and and it's odd because the it sort of implies or at least the way they shot it and i wonder by the way i wonder if it was shot this way because they literally didn't know how the film was going to end so they literally just said to stallone look you're going to stand at the back of this thing you're going to start shooting we don't know exactly yet what you're shooting at we don't know what's happening down there on the ground, but you're just going to shoot, 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 and we'll work the rest out later. <laughs> That's sort of the vibe I get from this, because, again, it's it's odd that he's sort of nowhere around. Like, you literally, it's not like you could, you watch him shoot and you're looking, like, there's no point of view over his shoulder where you can see what he's actually shooting at. You can see him aiming at people. No, he's just, you just keep cutting back to him firing, and then somewhere else people are exploding. Uh, they they do that one shot where the the truck comes up behind him, which is a great shot by the way. When the mm. truck comes up behind him and he just swings around, just starts tearing through. I mean, like the trees falling and 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 the people just exploding in the truck. Um, and then later he's shooting at the boat, sort of before the other guy blows it up, I guess. And then suddenly he kind of looks looks at something and takes off. And then you see the the main baddie running up the hill. And he gets stabbed, and there's Rambo standing behind the tree. Well, how the hell did you get up past the guy and behind a tree in this this clearing? Like it, 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 it was really oddly cut. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not trying to tear that up as much as I'm just sort of saying eh, I wanted more. Hmm. I could feel that. That you know what? I can get behind that. I can get you there. But what about you for your consideration? Uh for my consideration, I. I will, and I again. I kind of. I, I feel like I'm talking out both sides of my mouth for a lot of this discussion, uh, <laughs> because I'm going to give credit that they did show how awful and violent this part of the world would be, and I liked the kind of gritty realism of it. Uh, I, again, it's it, it it was sort of like Stallone saying. <clears throat> again, in the spirit of Rocky Balboa, well, let's talk about where this guy would really be. Let's talk about what a war would really look like in this part of the world. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I have to kind of give him credit for that. And again, I liked that this was a, a look at the character of Rambo. Again, how uh, totally just lost his faith in humanity, living in this awful place corner of the world uh again i i don't remember now it's funny i'm going to kind of back and forth between the theatrical cut and the uh, extended cut that we saw uh but she <laughs> said something to him about like you know how, how do you live out here and he just sort of says oh you're used to it and you know again I, I i do feel like that would be as opposed to the kind of nicer rambo living in the monastery with the monks of rambo three uh and by the way i liked the little nod in this, when he's catching the fish and he hands one off to some of the the monks on the river, yeah. like yeah. I like that because that was almost like a little uh, a, kind of in my mind it was sort of a little nod to the third one when he was at the monastery, but now he's just off on his own, but he still kind of takes care of them. Uh, you know, I like that. That was pretty cool. So just yeah, just kind of showing how he lives day by day was pretty cool. Um, and incidentally, by the way, I liked when. When the missionaries first arrive at this place where the the snake <clears throat> show is, and boy, that's I I remember when he's bringing the snakes to the snake show, and there's people watching, and you see people with cameras. It's like, is this really somebody's idea of an interesting way to spend your afternoon watching these these like poor peasants picking at poking at snakes? Um, <laughs> anyway, when when they first arrive, I like the fact that they showed they show Rambo kind of like looking at her at least like once or twice. Like right. you, you see him trying to talk to the husband, then you see him look over and he's looking at this like the probably the only blonde woman he's seen in probably twenty years. So he's I I I, I like it was kind of humanizing in a way. Like like yeah, Rambo's gonna be looking at this check. He's gonna be like, holy cow, that's a I haven't seen a girl in a long time. So <laughs> I kind of like that. So again, I I think my my favorite consideration is is, is kind of vague and out there, but uh, I, I I did like that. And by the way. Frankly, uh, and here's another one. 
in fact, I'll even say if I have to pick just one thing, uh, it's this. I loved how I got I love the scene with the pirates on the river, how he takes them all out. Uh, that was a great action, little action beat. And then that, that little guy starts yelling at him. What did you do? And, and then he, when he drops him off, you know, I'm going to have to report this. Right. And I mean, I thought I, I like I, I'm saying to myself, Rambo should laugh at the guy's face, like laugh in his face. Like, yes, go tattletale on me to who you stupid jerk. <laughs> um but anyway, I love the fact that at the end, this guy who was lecturing him about taking a life has to bash some guy's face in with a rock. Like, I mean, talk about, I mean, that to me was, that was sort of like, like the whole, the, the theme of this movie summed up this guy who, you know, lived in his sheltered little world who lectured Rambo about who he is and what he does now has been pushed to where he himself is taking a human life with his bare hands. I, I I really thought that was a great touch. I like that. I'll agree with you on that, my man. In fact, yes, weirdly, this was a great little character study uh, all around and told in a very subtle way. So color me impressed. Color me impressed, and I'm glad I finally watched this movie. But so ends our review of the 2008 Rambo. But we're coming to the conclusion of the Rambo series, ladies and gentlemen, only to start another series with, this time, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but we'll get to that. Because next week, ladies and gentlemen, Rambo, Last Blood. Fingers crossed! <laughs> I I am literally, honestly, like, I have no clue what to expect from this film. So it, it should definitely be an interesting one. And actually, yeah, now that you mention it, we're going right into Schwarzenegger after this, so it kind of feels like uh it's 80s action hero revival week lately <laughs> yes it does and i i don't know man i'm i'm curious i'm i'm keeping an open mind and i am curious but frankly it's got an interesting battle after this one it certainly does certainly does <laughs> hey so until next time sure great show probably could have done uh, a little more on this, but you know, there it is. And oddly, we went pretty long, so it's uh, <laughs> uh, it was still a good shot, my friend, as always. All right, man. So then I shall talk to you soon. See you next week. Pistole! Thanks for listening to the Reviews Without Remorse podcast with Joe and Dave. Join us here every Thursday for a new episode. And be sure to check out the Reviews Without Remorse channel on YouTube for spoiler free reviews of new releases. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider becoming a patron. You can find our page on Patreon.com. As little as $1 a month goes a long way. All clips in this podcast are used for commentary and critique, and is considered fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. A is for B is for But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. C is for Congratulations. You're fired! D is for I'm Doing this for free, so don't break my balls, okay? E is for Everybody should change! F is for Fist! G is for Glad you could drop in. H is for Hey Luke Skywalker, use the force. I is for It's a blue light. What does it do? It turns blue. I see. J is for Jealous, lazy, bull. K is for Kentucky Fried Idiot. L is for Live for nothing or die for something. M is for Mother, I don't want to be changed. N is for Nothing is over. Nothing. O is for Of course I knew. I just had no idea. P is for Ponytail. Q is for Quartz a perfume for Adrian. She likes to smell good. R is for Rambo is a pussy. S is for Stop! Or my mom will shoot. T is for This is where the law stops. And I start. U is for. <laughs> Does she have a sister? V 
is for very mean and nasty place. W is for <laughs> why X is for no one is gonna run the union. Y is for yes, yes, I love Jim Conan the Barbarian. <gasps> Z is for.